Hi everybody, it's me, Mr. Kennedy. Here's a new theorem for your toolbox, Rolle's theorem. It says that for f of x, continuous and differentiable, on a closed interval a to b, if f of a equals f of b, then there exists a c where f prime of c equals zero. That's called Rolle's theorem. So here's what it really means. If I take this little window and I restrict my domain, so I'm just viewing that window of the function, here's a and here's b. So they have the same y value, okay? And then something crazy goes on in between. Woo! That's a crazy function, right? So whatever happens, we don't know. But if it's continuous and differentiable, that means it has a derivative at every point, then we're guaranteed that there's some c value in between, maybe one, maybe two, maybe a million. Here's two c values where it's flat. The derivative is zero. Okay, if you think about that for a second, it makes sense, because for it to start here and end up here, back at the same level, either the whole thing is flat, or it goes up and down, but it's flat one or more places. Okay, so let's see an example. All right, here's an example. This is number two, by the way, on the uh, homework that you guys are going to be doing, so uh, you're welcome. f of x equals x squared minus 11x plus 30 on a closed interval 5 to 6. So before I do anything... I have to check that this satisfies the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem, which says, one, it's continuous. Well, this is a polynomial. They're all continuous, right? There's no denominator, so it can't be undefined anywhere. And there's no asymptotes in between 5 and 6 anyway. Or anywhere, it's a polynomial. Uh, is it differentiable? Yes, I can take the derivative really easily, and so can you. Uh, and then the third thing is, does f of a equal f of b? That's the real check. So is f of 5 equal to f of 6? Mm. So if I plug in 5, I get 5 squared is 25 minus 55. That's negative 30. Plus 30 is 0. So I, f of 5 is 0. Double check me. If I plug in 6, I should also get 0. 36 minus 66, that's negative 30. Plus 30 is 0. So this satisfies the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem, which means we can use it. So the question is, find the c. Find the value between 5 and 6, okay, where this polynomial is flat. So where the derivative equals 0. So I'm going to take the derivative. f prime of x equals 2x minus 11. So that's the derivative. I want to find out where is that equal to 0. So I set it equal to 0. Solve a Rooney, and I get 11 over 2. And that's my answer. So that's the c value guaranteed by Rolle's theorem for the function to be flat. Easy. All right, so here's theorem number two, the mean value theorem. And at the end of this, you should realize that Rolle's theorem is really just a special case of the mean value theorem. So this goes for everything. And Rolle's theorem only applies, remember, if f of a equals f of b, so if they're flat. Okay? But the mean value theorem works for any f of a and f of b, even if they're different. So the mean value theorem says, for a continuous differentiable function, so the same condition, on a closed interval a, b, there exists an x equals c, some x value, between a and b, where f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Now this should look familiar to you, right? This is the average rate of change, the average slope between a and b. It's just the line, the secant line, connecting the two. And this is the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line. Instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so basically, graphically, here's what it's saying. If you have some f of a and some f of b, notice they're different here. They could be whatever. And you have some crazy, woo, some crazy function in there. Uh, that the instantaneous rate of change, which is the tangent line, is the same slope as the secant line. So let me draw with a different color. Here's the secant line for a and b, okay? There's another tangent line somewhere here. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's here, okay? And those are parallel. And maybe there's another one up here, okay? But there's a few different values, at least one, where the slope of the tangent lines at these points are equal to the slope of the secant line. And to explain it in a real-life context, if you go on a trip and... After an hour, you went 60 miles. Your average rate of change was 60 miles per hour. There must have been some point at which 
you went exactly 60 miles an hour on that trip. Maybe you went 80 miles for part of the trip, but going from zero to 80 miles per hour, there's an instant where you're going exactly 60 miles per hour. That's what the mean value theorem says. Okay, the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line somewhere between A and B. We need an example. Here's my example. F of X equals X cubed minus 2X squared plus 3 on the closed interval 1 to 3. So I need to check, is it continuous? It's a polynomial. There's no denominator. So yes, it's continuous. Does it have a derivative at every point? Yeah, if I take the derivative, it's a polynomial also. So it's still defined at every point. And I don't have to check the third thing. I don't have to check if f of a equals f of b because this isn't Rolle's theorem. This is the mean value theorem. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to find out what is the average rate of change. So I'm going to do f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 3 minus 1. So I plug in 3, I get 27 minus 18, that's 9, plus 3, that's 12. So I get 12 minus, now plug in 1, and you get 1 minus 2, that's negative 1 plus 3, is 2. So you get 12 minus 2 all over 2, that's 5. All right, so the mean value theorem says there's some point between 1 and 3 where the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change, equals 5. So let me do the derivative. f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 4x. Okay, that's the derivative. That's got to equal 5 somewhere. So I set it equal to 5. Now I solve this. So I'm going to subtract this over to here. And I can try to factor it, but I don't know if it factors or not because it's got a leading coefficient other than 1. So I'm going to do the quadratic formula solve. So x equals 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus 4 times 3 times negative 5 all over 6. So I multiply these. It's going to be positive. It's going to be plus uh, 60. 16 plus 60 is 76. So I get 4 plus or minus radical 76 over 6. Hello. So I guess you couldn't see down here. Uh, the answer was 4 plus or minus radical 76 over 6. And if you think about it, the negative 1 d doesn't work because it's not between 1 and 3. Okay, if you do 4 minus radical 76, radical 76 is a little less than radical 81, so it's a little bit less than 9. 4 minus 9 divided by 6 is a negative number. All right, so it's not between uh, 1 and 3. But 4 plus 9 is 13 divided by 6. That's a little bit more than 2, so it's around 2-ish. That's between 1 and 3. So really, I can reject the negative, just erase that. So that's my uh, value that's guaranteed by the mean value theorem to be between that closed interval, where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. See you later.